Having fortified his military camp, the harbour, and the city of Ruspina after extricating himself from the Battle of Ruspina, Caesar remained within the town. There, while awaiting fresh supplies and further reinforcements from Italy, Caesar continued to train his forces. He used sailors from his fleet to fill the gaps in his undermanned legions. Anticipating the use of elephants against the Pompeian forces, we are told Caesar arranged shipments of elephants from Rome's Circus Maximus, so his soldiers could be appropriately trained for battle against them, and also to avoid the potential for Caesar's horses to be spooked by accustoming them to the elephants sent in advance. One of Caesar's admirals by the name of Gaius Salustius Crispus, also known as the historian Sallust, successfully raided the Churchina Islands, where large supplies of grain were being guarded by Pompeian forces. With his legions no longer hungry, and the arrival of the 13th and 14th legions from Italy, Caesar went on the offensive. Following a skirmish outside Ruspina, which saw Caesar's forces slaughter some of the Gallic and Germanic cavalry under the command of Titus Labienus, Caesar marched for and camped outside the town of Uzita, which was the main source of fresh water for the Pompeian legions. Metellus Scipio, who had arrived at Hadrumetum, marched his legions to protect Uzita, commanding King Juba to also bring his Numidian cavalry. Despite his forces now being at approximately 13 legions, Metellus Scipio, who was in constant communication with his underground allies back in Rome, did not attempt to attack Caesar's camp. Believing Caesar's political support in Italy to be crumbling, and his veteran soldiers to be war-weary, Metellus Scipio pushed for a stalemate, which he believed would wear down the Caesarian legions, and ultimately end in Caesar's defeat. He even attempted to demoralize the Caesarian legions further by torturing the commander of Caesar's 14th legion to death, along with several other captives, right outside Caesar's military camp. But Caesar stayed put. When the 9th and 10th legions finally landed in Africa, bolstering his numbers even further, Caesar directed the building of fortifications leading from his camp to the town of Uzita, as well as catapults and scorpion missile launches. When Caesar ordered the bombing of Uzita, many from the Pompeian 4th and 6th legions, along with a number of Gaetulians, defected from the Pompeians, crossing over to Caesar's camp. Metellus Scipio, however, still refused to attack Caesar. When Caesar's 7th and 8th legions eventually arrived in Africa, his supply chain once again became an issue. With his captured stores from Sallust's invasion of the Churchina Islands spent, and approximately 12 legions to feed, Caesar needed to secure more supplies. Commanding his fleet to blockade the harbour at the town of Thapsus, Caesar withdrew from Uzita. Marching towards Thapsus, his men foraged along the way. The lands near the towns of Agar and Zeta were stripped bare by the Caesarian army, even as they were shadowed and harassed by the Pompeians. Caesar arrived at Thapsus in early February of the 46 BC year and set up camp. Building both a contravallation and circumvallation, he laid siege to the town. The city of Thapsus had only two landward approaches, divided by the marshes of Mokhnine, which acted as a natural defence for the town. Using the marshes to his advantage, Caesar ordered fortifications built at the southern approach to Thapsus, commanding three cohorts to stand guard. This would force Metellus Scipio into taking the other approach to the city. Ordering Lucius Afranius and Marcus Petrius, both generals who had been pardoned by Caesar after the Battle of Ilerda, along with King Juba to position themselves at the Caesarian southern fortifications, Metellus Scipio marched his army through the alternate approach and set up camp near Caesar's position around 6 April. Metellus Scipio then ordered the entirety of his legions into battle formation as a means of protecting the workforce building his camp. Knowing the Pompeians would be exhausted from their march, the building of their military camp, and from standing in formation for so many hours, Caesar waited until the Pompeian camp was completed, and then marched approximately 65,000 well-rested men onto the field to offer battle. Metellus Scipio's infantry were arranged as three lines in the centre, flanked by his light infantry and cavalry. In front of each flank, Metellus Scipio placed 30 war elephants. Leaving two legions to maintain the siege of Thapsus, Caesar placed his 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 13th, and 14th at his centre, with his cavalry and archers on his flanks. 
Splitting his 5th legion, Caesar placed one half behind each of his flanks. Taking up his usual command position at his right, Caesar waited. For some time neither army attacked, each waiting for the other to make its move. At this point, we are told several versions of what next took place. One version claims Caesar suffered a seizure, and in his absence his troops, many of whom were still frustrated and angry over their long military commitment, were anxious to finish the civil war and surged forward. Another version says they charged because they saw an advantageous opportunity, given the way the Pompeians were shifting nervously, moving out of formation. Whatever the truth, Caesar's right pushed forward. And though Caesar had not called for the advance, more of his army reacted to what they believed was the command to charge. In the end, Caesar had no choice but to sound the trumpets and launch an all-out attack with his legions. The archers on Caesar's right flank sprang a bevy of missiles at the elephants on Metellus Scipio's left flank. The arrows frightened the elephants, forcing them to turn and trample the Pompeian light infantry and cavalry stationed behind them. The war elephants on Metellus Scipio's right flank charged Caesar's left flank. The cavalry and archers on Caesar's left parted, allowing the charging elephants to pass through them, where Caesar's split 5th legion stood at the ready. The 5th legion were those Caesar had trained to deal with the war elephants. Fearlessly standing their ground against the charging animals, the 5th legion blasted trumpets to frighten the elephants, while simultaneously jabbing them in the eyes and other weak points with their peeler. Injured and terrified, some even blinded, the elephants turned away, charging back towards the Pompeian army. They crashed into and trampled Metellus Scipio's right flank, unleashing complete chaos within the Pompeian ranks. The Pompeian left flank, which had been the first to be trampled by elephants, could not recover under the constant attack from Caesar's infantry. Giving up, the left flank began to crumble, followed by the remainder of Metellus Scipio's army, who folded and began to retreat. Some of the Pompeian cavalry had successfully evaded Caesar's lines and had attacked the Caesarian fortifications around Thapsus, but the two legions Caesar had stationed to maintain the siege pushed them back, forcing them to retreat with the remainder of the Pompeian army. After effectively defending Caesar's siege works, the two legions moved to reinforce the three cohorts fortifying the city's southbound approach. Together, the southbound Caesarian legions attacked and took the camp of Lucius Afranius, and then turned toward the camp of King Juba. Before they could attack however, Juba abandoned camp and retreated from the battle altogether, along with his Numidian cavalry. As his forces chased the Pompeians back to their camp, Caesar, we are told, lost complete control of his legions. Entering into a type of frenzied bloodlust, Caesar's men became mad with rage, slaughtering every Pompeian they could get their hands on. Unarmed and surrendering men were cut down on the spot amidst Caesar's shouts and protestations that men be spared. Plutarch tells us that only about 10,000 men in total fell during the actual Battle of Thapsus, but that the majority of Metellus Scipio's army were completely wiped out by Caesar's crazed and bloodthirsty legions. Metellus Scipio, Titus Labienus, King Juba, Lucius Afranius, and Marcus Petrius all miraculously escaped the Battle of Thapsus. Titus Labienus, along with Pompeius Magnus' youngest son, Sextus Pompeius, fled to Hispania, where Sextus's older brother, Nius Pompeius, was busy raising troops on the Iberian Peninsula. King Juba and Marcus Petrius, after being pursued by a mercenary named Publius Sitius, chose to duel one another to death, with the winner committing slave-assisted suicide. Lucius Afranius and Faustus Cornelius Sulla were also caught and killed by Publius Sitius. Metellus Scipio fled back to Utica, where he informed Marcus Porcius Cato of the Pompeian loss at Thapsus. According to legend, upon hearing that Caesar had won the civil war, Cato committed suicide by falling on his sword. When his men found him laying in a pool of his own blood, they quickly called for a surgeon, who stitched up Cato's wounds, saving his life. When he came to, we are told that Cato, horrified at the prospect of living life as a slave to Caesar, chastised his men for saving him. Then, ripping open his stitches, Cato disemboweled himself with his own hands. Of Cato's death Caesar is reported by Plutarch to have said, 
Cato, I must grudge you your death as you grudged me the honor of saving your life. Following Cato's suicide, Metellus Scipio set sail to meet with Nius and Sextus Pompeius in Hispania, but was forced back to Africa's coast by bad storms. There, he lost a small naval engagement to the same mercenary responsible for brutalizing other Pompeians, Publius Sitius. Like Cato, Quintus Sicilius Metellus Scipio removed his sword and stabbed himself to death. On July 25 of the 46 BC year, with the war in Africa now concluded, Caesar set sail for Rome, and the prospect of creating a lasting peace, if such a thing were possible.